is a number which allows you to call in and listen to the committees as well as the full City Council of the Los Angeles City Council's uh, workings and to listen along uh, on the phone as well. We right now have uh, six members present. Um, thank you to Council Members Labange, uh, Perry, Smith, Wesson, Zine uh, for being here. We are. Uh, we have uh, a number of uh, council members that are excused, a couple who are up in Sacramento lobbying with the mayor for, uh, uh, this, on behalf of the city, but would like to ask uh, council members Cardenas uh, to come down, council member uh, uh, Padilla to come down, council member Parks uh, to come down, council member Reyes um, to come down, council member Weiss. And as soon as we have uh, 10 members, we will begin um, our meeting officially. Um, Thank you, Mr. Parks, for, for being here. We are at seven members, just three more, and we will begin the meeting. Um, so Council Members Cardenas, Council Members uh, Padilla, Reyes, and Weiss can make their way down um, as soon as we have each of the members that is scheduled to be here today. Since we're just at a bare minimum, I believe, of 10, um, we will begin the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. Uh, now we're just awaiting uh, Mr. Weiss, Mr. Padilla, uh, Mr. Cardenas, and we'll be there and have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Padilla. We now are at uh, nine members, Mr. Cardenas, Mr. Weiss, um, either, either of you are in the building can make your way down. Thank you.
Uh, council members, we've uh, just learned another council member is unexpectedly ill this morning, so we may uh, not have a quorum today. Um, though rumor has it that one more council member is um, a minute away, so we will wait two more minutes. If we can't establish quorum, we will adjourn this meeting. Thank you. While we are awaiting our last member, I um, wanted to announce that we have the uh, Federation of Chambers of Commerce of um, uh, Mexico, Central, and South America that are here. So, de parte de Concejal José Huizar y de mi parte, Presidente de Consejo Eric Arcetti, me gustaría uh, darles un cordial bienvenida a nuestra bella ciudad de Nuestra Señora de la Reina de Los Ángeles, a los miembros de la Federación de las Cámaras de Comercio de Nos Visitan de México, Centro y Sur uh, uh, América. Por favor, si se ponen de pie para, uh, para ser reconocidos. If everybody could please give them a round of applause. If you please stand, we'd like to welcome the Chambers of Commerce that are here. Gracias por venir. Y gracias por acompañarnos. Um, do we have any announcements, colleagues? This might be the, a good time to do what we usually do at the end of the meeting, if there are any announcements that folks have uh, of events or activities happening in their districts. I will remind everybody that tomorrow City Council will not be in session. We have a scheduled uh, lobbying trip to Sacramento, where a couple members already are today, but we'll be heading up to Sacramento to um, lobby some members of the state government and uh, uh, especially on the upcoming infrastructure bond. Um, but any other announcements at all? Okay. We will dispense with announcements at the end of the meeting, um, and I think we're about one minute away from starting. Again, I want to thank Council Members LaBonge, Padilla, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Smith, 
Wesson and Zine for being here. We are wait, made it, awaiting Mr. Weiss and we will have a quorum and begin the meeting. Mr. Weiss is here. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Cardinus Gruel, Hahn, Weiser, Labonge, Padilla, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosendahl, Smith, Weiss, Wesson, Zion, Garcetti, 10 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, first order of business. Mr. President, do you wish to do the flag salute at this time? Yes, sir. Um, if I can ask Ms. Perry, who is our, our first member in chambers, to lead us in the salute to the flag, if everybody in chambers can please rise. Place your right hand over your heart and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Ms. Perry. Um, next order of business. Approval of the minutes. Uh, Mr. Smith moves, Mr. Wesson seconds. If there's no objection, unanimous vote, so ordered. Those are approved. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Okay, Mr. Padilla moves, Mr. Laban seconds. If there's no objections, it's unanimous vote, so ordered. Uh, Mr. President, now would be time for comments from the public on items not on Council's agenda. Okay, uh, Council each day takes public comment on items that are uh, not on our agenda but are under our jurisdiction. I'd like to uh, invite Ziggy Kraus forward, um, Robert Blue, and Kristen Ochoa. You'll have two minutes each, and welcome to City Council. Well, good morning, the Honorable Council President Gassetti and uh, dear Council members. My name is Ziggy Cruz, and I'm addressing you today with a challenge. Uh, it is obvious that the members of the City Council, but at least some of you, are in great support of the public transportation system of the City of Los Angeles. Uh, some of you are even suggesting to have less parking in parts of Hollywood where it's desperately needed. Some projects are being going up with the suggestion, put less parking. Anyway, that's not my challenge. I would like to let you know that I was prepared to hear the answer to this question at the State of uh, Hollywood luncheon in January of this year. But I guess Council Member or Council President Garcetti ran out of time, so he didn't get around to any uh, of the questions to be answered. So here I am today with a question, or if you like, challenge. Would you 
dear council members, be willing to take the public transportation system for one week without changing your schedule calendar and have this adventure being documented via videotape. Um, I would like to suggest that Honorable Council President Garcetti leads off and chooses five more members to take part of this little adventure. If you choose to take this challenge, please feel free to invite the media because we all know that as soon as our camera is rolling, uh, you guys are pretty much with the spirits going. Now, if you, after one week, still believe that the public transportation system in Los Angeles, as it is right now, is still so great and need to be supported, I will personally head off a campaign to get more commuters to use that transportation system. Unless then, I would not suggest that you are supporting a system if you don't know really how it works. I am a commuter. I take the public transportation on a frequent basis. I got stuck several times in several parts of Hollywood, Los Angeles. Uh, there was an article lately in the LA Times written by a, a reporter who took the subway system and the remaining public transportation parts of it to go from Hollywood to LAX, and it took him over two hours. So, Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate your comments, Ziggy. Uh, next is uh, Robert Blue. Welcome, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council President, Honorable Council Members. Uh, I received a notice from the Community Redevelopment Agency about a hearing to eminent domain my small property and business for a $326 million project, which includes a luxury hotel. The city is giving us only two choices. Either we sell or, or uh, the city will use eminent domain to take your property and small business. And we're not even in the way of the project. At a very minimum, we expect our local government to treat all of its constituents on an equal basis. But that isn't happening when it comes to development in Hollywood. Regarding the Hollywood Vine project under the Community Redevelopment Agency, the developer's given many extensions and assistance over a four-year period and special help from the city, including ordinances allowing them to seek zone changes on property they do not own. The developer's also is getting up to $6.5 million of taxpayers, including me. In the meantime, the CRA never conducted any outreach to establish small businesses or small property owners directly affected by this. Apparently, only one interest card was sent out, and the property owner, or if, if the property owner business owner didn't get it or didn't respond to it, that was it. Only one chance and you're out. Now we're given one chance from the city of Los Angeles. Either sell or we will force you out through eminent domain. It reminds me of the movie Wall Street where the sinister Gordon Gecko tells shareholders greed is good. Well, you may expect that from a private developer, but not from the city, especially the city of Los Angeles. And talk about greed, the developer already has control of 75% of the land. In the past, developers said they don't need the rest of the property. In 2002, they said that in the LA Times. And all we would like to do is stay. I, I've made it clear on several occasions we'd be willing to restore the entire building. And the building is respect, uh, protected by the federal registry. It protects the whole building, not just the facade. But we have a big hammer over our head. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. Appreciate your comments. Uh, Kristen Ochoa. So our last speaker for public comment. Thank you, Council President and Honorable Council Members. My name is Kristen Ochoa. I'm the director of the Los Angeles Overdose Prevention Task Force. And I'm a physician that has been brought on by the Drug Policy Alliance and Clean Needles Now to build a public-private partnership of um, people to combat overdose in Los Angeles. Um, we have about 900 uh, preventable deaths from overdose a year in Los Angeles County. And that number has been increasing greatly since the early 90s. Um, and so we are going to be holding a summit and I would like to invite all city council members or their health deputies or representatives to attend. That summit will be on March 15th and Stephen Simon, the city AIDS coordinator and I will be inviting you all to that today. Um, we have Dr. Jonathan Fielding, the director of public health and health officer. He will be giving our keynote and we'll have representatives from Supervisor Antonovich's office, uh, the Los Angeles Police Department, as well as community and treatment service providers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your comments, and we'll make sure that word gets out. Um, that closes our public comment for today. Uh, next order of business, Mr. Furt. Uh, Mr. President, before beginning the agenda, there has been a request to continue item four to March 1st. Okay. Colleagues, is there any objection to continuing item four? If not, that's so ordered. 
on the regular agenda, items 1 through 14, with the exception of item 4, are items for which public hearings have been held. And for clarification, on item 10, there is no action today. Pursuant to Council Rule 77, the matter will go over for one week to February 28th. Uh, colleagues, just to decipher that and for members of the public, item number 10 is our first change to Council Rules. It's a new Council Rule, number 17. I, I had been previously unaware that I think there's a Rule 16, of course, and a Rule 18. Um, but no 17. This uh, puts into uh, permanent, um, permanently into our rules that uh, in order to waive something out of committee that requires the council president's approval. That was the policy under Mr. Padilla. It's the policy now, but this formalizes that as well. Um, and uh, under our own rules, that has to carry over uh, until February 28th, one week from today. So that's why there's no action. It is before us if there's any discussion that people would like to have. Any specials? For these items, colleagues, one through fourteen, and yeah, Mr. Parks, uh, special on number five, and also uh, uh, a motion to adopt the uh, budget and finance report for number fourteen. Okay. Mr. Parks moves the budget and finance on for number fourteen, but that's not special, right? That's just to, to move that report. Okay. Any other specials? If not, can we please prepare the roll and the balance and tabulate the vote? Ten eyes. Those are approved. Next items. Please. And, Mr. President, the ordinances will go over one week to the 28th. That's right. Because we don't have 12 members today, colleagues, the, any ordinances uh, will be carried over. Okay, next items. Items 15 through 42 are items which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, we have a card on number 38, so let's call that special. Any other specials, colleagues? Yes, Mr. Parks. Uh, number six, forthwith. Sixth, we will send forthwith. Any other specials, colleagues, on items? 1537 39 to 42. Okay, seeing none, please prepare the roll on the balance and tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Those are approved. And again, the ordinances go over to the 28th. Okay. So uh, items 43 through 52 are the closed session items. Do you wish to hold those on the desk? Yes, please. Let's hold those on the desk. On the supplemental agenda, items 53 through 56 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, we have a card on 54 and a card on 56, so let's call those special, please. Um, any other specials, colleagues, on these items? Seeing none, please prepare the roll and the balance, Madam Clerk, and tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Those two are approved. Uh, next items. That would take you back to the items called special, and that would be item five, called special by Councilmember Parks. Okay, Mr. Parks, we have uh, item number five before us. Let me request that uh, we vote on that. Uh, we had some public comment, but they're oh, willing just, to let it just go. Oh, just was handed to me, okay. Yeah. Uh, Fran uh, Francisco Pinedo? They, they would like to waive that until the report comes back. Okay. Because this is merely asking for the study. Okay. And once the study's done, they'd like to make their public comment then. So, so no comment today? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll open the roll on this, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay. That is approved. Next. Item? Item 38 was called special for a card from the public. Okay. Uh, yes, we'll go forth with on item 5, please. Um, item 38, Sylvia Hawkins, if you'd like to come forward for two minutes of comment. Um, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Ms. Sylvia Hawkins. As of booking with the Los Angeles Police Department, once fingerprinted and booking of all property of the inmates, all cash that is turned in is now released after leaving the jail cell with checks, only with all property. All checks are given to catch the signature of all releases of inmates. Once booked, all inmates will receive a, wrist, a wristband with their picture on the band. This way they will not be able to take home with them this wristband but left at the jail cell to catch them from state to state and other countries to book them again that have now is known as fugitive or felonies. Again, the rich man is new in the all jail state to state, which now the rich man of the inmate is their picture that is left at the jail cell. Now it is, the rich man is taken from state to state and country to country once they try to uh, escape. We, they already is booked it and printed and fingerprinted. And now any money that they come in with once they are booked, any money that they turn in, 
what is traced in the money or stolen money will not be released to the inmate. It will be given to the inmate check. Once they cast the check, now they are caught again. So I'm very thankful to the Los Angeles Police Department that is now getting stricter on how they're booking, how they're releasing inmates. Therefore, the inmate is shocked once they see that their picture is on the rich man and they cannot take it home. It is going from jail cell country to country and now it's catching the fugitive. Thank you very much. My name is Sylvia Hawkins. Thank you, Ms. Hawkins. Uh, we appreciate your comments on the Wilshire Los Angeles Police Department Carnival. Um, if we can please open the roll on the items. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Item 54 was called special for a card from the public. Okay, item 54 is now before us. I'd like to invite Thomas Winfield forward to give comments at this time on item 54. Welcome, Mr. Winfield. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. I'm here on a matter which is actually not reflected on your agenda is the fact that there is pending litigation regarding the project which is referenced as item 54. I've looked at your previous agendas and I can't find where there's been a closed session where you've had an opportunity to be advised by the city attorney as to the litigation. So I thought I'd take a moment to let you know there is a sequel lawsuit was filed against the CRA and the city. A settlement conference has been set as required by the statute by Mr. Chung of your attorney's office for March 6 at 2 p.m. We assumed that that would be the appropriate time to talk to the city about some of the issues we raised in our letter today. Instead, Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon before the three-day weekend, I received a letter from Mr. Chung which included the motion suggested by Councilwoman Perry and the findings that she was requesting that you make today. The action that you're being asked by Councilwoman Perry to take today will not cure the defects alleged in our our petition that to the extent that this body is the lead agency. The city is the lead agency on this project, we believe, and the lead agency, whether it's the city or the CRA, is required to do a supplemental or subsequent EIR on this project, not an addenda, as was done by the agency. That issue still exists, whatever action you take today. And we would request that rather than having this done piecemeal, that this matter be continued until after we've had the opportunity to meet with your staff, your lawyers, and the CRA staff and lawyers, and see if there is a way to settle this matter to address some of the issues, all of the issues that I raised in my letter today. Just for the record, I want to confirm, Mr. President, that you have each received a copy yes, of my have. letter, which Thank you, and uh, with that, we would uh, request the continuance, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Winfield, and we did receive that, each one of us. I also have three more cards to hand to me, Jay Ziff, um, Linda Bozum, and Patrick Spillane. Two minutes apiece. Good morning, council members. Uh, Jay Ziff with PCR Services Corporation. We are the environmental consultants who worked with the CRA in preparing the addendum for the Metropolis Mixed Use Project. I'd uh, just like to respond uh, briefly to a few of the points uh, just made by Mr. Winfield. Uh, first, uh, there was an addendum prepared for this project, which is a fully entitled project that could be built today. Uh, the opportunities for preparing an addendum are perfectly suited to this project, which brings in residential uses and substantially reduces the impacts in certain key areas of the project. This project, by introducing residential, has reduced trip generation for the project by approximately 50%. Uh, that same reduction in uh, trip generation has eliminated eight significant unavoidable projects that would occur if this entitled project uh, were built today. Uh, as it reduces traffic 
substantially. It also reduces impacts on air quality and noise. Uh, the addendum absolutely uh, was selected and decided on by the CRA with our input because of the reduced effects of this project. We also, uh, there are also contentions about this document having increased impacts relative to public services, police, and fire. The introduction of residential uses are actually beneficial in those respects. The reduction in traffic makes emergency services for both police and fire uh, in a much better uh, circumstance. Uh, there are also a significant reduction in the daytime population of the site with reductions in retail and commercial uses. Uh, we've got uh, very much uh, reduced impacts on police and fire, yet the same mitigation measures and regulatory requirements for police and fire Thank will you, still Zen. be uh, implemented with this project. Appreciate your comments. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Linda Bozo. Members of the Council, my name is Linda Bozang. I'm with the law firm of DLA Piper, Redneck, Gray Carey, and I represent uh, Metropolis here today. I'll be very, very brief, but I wanted to comment on the letter from Brown Winfield and Kanzanieri uh, with respect to the addendum that has been prepared. Um, Mr. Winfield seems to feel that if you have a larger project or a project that is increased in height, that that automatically dictates a subsequent, subsequent or a subsequent EIR. That is not the case. If your impacts are not increased in severity or if there are not additional impacts, an addendum is the appropriate CEQA vehicle to be prepared. That is the case here. All of our impacts were either less or were at the same level that they were um, previously. And as Mr. Ziff has indicated with traffic uh, in particular, we actually have less impacts. Our school and park impacts are mitigated by the fees that are legally required to be paid. Our impacts on fire and police are similar and not greater than uh, the previous document. And so I just want to conclude in that addendum is appropriate for this project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Patrick Spillane. Good morning. Patrick Spillane for IDS Real Estate Group. On behalf of IDS, the developer of this project, we want to thank you for making this technical correction to the approvals granted on December 21st. I would like to touch on one point that was raised in the correspondence submitted this morning by Winfield Kanzanieri, which uh, makes some unsubstantiated allegations of violations of redevelopment law. Namely, that the seller in selling the land profited from the assembly that was made by the CRA. This issue has been addressed previously, and in fact, the seller has lost probably over $50 million in holding this land for 50 years. And we'd like to simply point out that many of the facts stated in that letter are incorrect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate the public comment. And that closes our public hearing. Um, Ms. Perry is our first speaker. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. I wanted to ask Tim Chung from the uh, city attorney's office to come to the uh, table and um, take a moment to respond to some of the issues raised by the speakers. Good morning, uh, Mr. President and city council members. My name is Tim Chung. I'm with the city attorney's office. I work with the community redevelopment agency. Um, we are here to uh, ask that the council adopt the motion that's presented. We believe it'll clarify and correct some of the procedural issues that have been raised um, with respect to this matter. Hold my um, time. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, if, if there are any specific questions, um, we'd well, like. I, there, I, perhaps you can share uh, or talk about the basis for the need for the technical correction from the perspective of the redevelopment agency. Right, uh, that's correct. There were some issues that were raised with respect to which en entity was the lead agency. We believe the adoption of the motion and the resolution will clarify some of those issues. Um, in addition, uh, with respect to the environmental issues that were raised in the letter, we believe that the PCR consultant uh, did respond to those issues adequately. And um, with respect to the uh, allowing the transfer, we believe that there were valid redevelopment purposes for allowing that change to occur, given the economic uh, conditions and circumstances that were happening in the, at the time. 
and um, when the uh, documents were originally transmitted back in December 2005 and the attachments were not included, uh, this motion was, a, was to clarify. Th that's correct. There was some confusion in that the agenda did not specifically reference the environmental documents that were required. Those have been uh, rectified in the uh, posted agenda and we do have the documents before the council now. All right. Um, I, I have no further questions, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Okay. Anything else? Sorry. Anything else, Ms. Perry? That's no. it. Okay. Ask for an I vote. Okay. Um, please open the roll on the item. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. That is approved. Okay. Let's send that forthwith. Please. All right. Next item. Item 56 was called special for a card from the public. Okay. On item 56, Jim McQuiston, planning rep from the East Hollywood Community Association. Welcome, Mr. McQuiston. Jim McQuiston, East Hollywood Community Association. Our community association approved this particular matter and we were given exactly one minute before the agency to say why. The agency was uh, very uh, short with everybody who was talking, but there was a, a problem of due process down below that was violated. Uh, for this council to take this up, uh, I'm not uh, in favor of Rule 245, but in this case, I think it's actually uh, very, very necessary for the council to take this up and refer this back to the Planning and Land Use Management Committee because the council district representative was not present to speak for this project. And so therefore the Planning Commission did not get the input from the City Council. So in that case, I think the Council does have a responsibility and a right to take up this matter. Thank you very much, Mr. McQuiston. Anybody wishing to be heard on this from the Council? Um, seeing none, if we can please open the roll on the item, close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. Okay. Uh, that jurisdiction is asserted. Um, next item. Mr. President, that leaves you with the closed session items. Okay. Uh, colleagues, before we go into closed session, I made the ask before, but if there's any announcements um, folks want to make, if not, uh, if I can please ask the um, sergeants at arms uh, to clear the chambers. We will now go into closed session in accordance with California state law for uh, legal matters. Um, which are under our jurisdiction. Uh, Mr. City Attorney? Welcome back to open session. We took up 10 items in closed session. Mr. Clerk, if you can please um, put forward for vote the 10 items uh, in open session that we uh, directed action on. Uh, Mr. President, on item 43, there is a recommendation for settlement in the amount of 355000 in the eminent domain case entitled City versus Davis et al. Please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. That is approved. Next item. Item 44, there's a recommendation for settlement in the amount of 500000 in the eminent domain case entitled City versus Veramontes et al. Please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. That is approved. Next item. Item 45, a recommendation for settlement in the amount of $2,341,985 in the eminent domain case entitled City versus Davis et al. Prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. That is approved. Next item. Item 46, there is a recommendation for settlement in the amount of 545000 in the eminent domain case entitled City versus Ernest and Josephine Padilla. Please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten ayes. That is approved. 
Next item. Item 47, there's a recommendation for settlement in the amount of $1,175,000 in the case entitled Stein versus City of LA. Please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. That is approved. Next item. Item 48, there's a recommendation for settlement in the amount of $152,826.98 in the case entitled Rosetta Mergenstein versus City of LA. Okay, anybody wishing to be heard? Seeing none, please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. That is approved. Next item. Item 49, there's a recommendation to approve the city attorney's recommendation in the case entitled Michael Foster versus City of LA and Chief Bratton to reinstate plaintiff as a police officer two with back pay from March 19, 2004 to the present. Uh, with each party bearing its own attorney fees and costs and the plaintiff dismissing his writ petition and waiving any interest on back pay. Anybody wishing to be heard? Seeing none, prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. That is approved. Next item. Item 50, there's a recommendation for settlement in the amount of 450000 in the case entitled Van Owen Dental Corporation versus City of LA. Anybody wishing to be heard? Seeing none, prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. That is approved. Item 51, there is a recommendation for settlement in the amount of $437,500 in the case entitled City of LA versus Maganda Corporation et al. Okay, anybody wishing to be heard on this one? If not, please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. That is approved as well. Next item. And on item 52, there is a recommendation for settlement in the amount of $2,175,000 in the cases entitled Martha Defoe versus City of LA, Susan Hayes versus City of LA, and Laura Cook versus City of LA. Okay. Anybody wishing to be heard? Seeing none, please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 10 ayes. That is approved. I clear the desk, Mr. Clerk. Council has motions for posting and referral. Uh, those are posted and referred. The desk is clear. Okay, I'd like to colleagues welcome a guest that I know Mr. Zine will join me in welcoming from uh, Lebanon, who we are working on the Beirut Sister City Agreement with. If you please welcome Anias Mohawad, who is here. Um, give him a round of applause and thank him for his great efforts, and welcome to the City of Angels. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, any other announcements, colleagues? Seeing none, if I can please ask everybody to rise in council chambers for adjourning motions. Yes, absolutely. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, as we noted at the beginning of the meeting, there will be no city council meeting tomorrow, Wednesday, February 22nd. Um, we will next meet on Friday, February 24th. Um, a number of folks will be up in Sacramento lobbying on behalf of the city of Los Angeles, and so we will not have a quorum and we will not be meeting tomorrow. Okay? Adjourning motions, colleagues. Mr. Labange. Uh, thank you, members. I ask we adjourn in memory of Kurt Gowdy, the great uh, voice of so much of sport for many, many years. Uh, Kurt Gowdy, originally a Boston Red Sox announcer, but then with uh, the American Football League when it was fledgling on NBC and also on uh, the wonderful shows he did for sportsmen's uh, shows in the Olympics for the ABC television network. Kurt Gowdy lived to be 86 years old, and he was a tremendous asset to sport and loved by many, as we adjourn in his memory. Thank you very much, Mr. Lange. And Lange. also uh, yesterday, uh, which is a great day when we uh, salute our presidents, I, like many of you, were still running around our districts and we pulled down a street and stopped to see a couple of the folks who lived on the block only to find that after I greeted them, I learned of the passing of one of their mothers, Peggy Off, who was a tremendous woman in the uh, Hancock Park, Wilshire Center community, very involved. Uh, they're the family who you may know who owns Kaiser Brothers, the dealership down here on Figueroa. Uh, Peggy uh, uh, passed away, and she was a great supporter of many great causes, including the Good Shepherd Center for Homeless Women. Uh, she had five children. One of her daughters preceded her in death, uh, survived by uh, three uh, sons and one daughter. I ask that we adjourn in memory of a great Angelino, Peggy Off. Thank you, Mr. Labange. Are there adjourning motions? Uh, colleagues, I ask that we adjourn in memory of Shawnee Michelle Trujillo, who is the niece of my office manager, Sally Castro, who passed away on Friday, February 17th. She was 32 years old and passed away after a two-year battle with liver cancer. She's a graduate of Cal State Los Angeles and Los Angeles Unified School District teacher who taught sixth and seventh grade at Mary McLeod Bethune Middle School in South Central Los Angeles. She was a graduate of Ramona Convent High School and she raised the bar of excellence for her siblings to strive for. She'll be sorely missed by her family as well as her friends and her coworkers. She's survived by her mom and dad, Lori and Fred Trujillo, 
her sister Monet, uh, her brothers uh, Gabriel and Andrew, um, her grandmother Mary Casares, her aunt Vivian de Soto, Uncle Robert de Soto. Uh, may she rest in peace. Yes, ma absolutely. We'll, we'll um, attach Ms. Perry's name to that as well as the seconder. Um, yes, Ms. Mr. Reyes. Councilman Labanges. Um, sure. Absolutely. To, to his first one or his second one? Second one. Second one. Okay. We'll add Mr. Reyes to the second adjourning motion. Any other adjourning motions, colleagues? If not, please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. This meeting of the Los Angeles City Council is hereby adjourned, and we will see everybody on Friday uh, the 22nd. Sorry, 24th. Friday the 24th will be our next meeting. Thank you.